hi everybody i am back with another video welcome back to my channel today i am talking about a an interesting topic and it's all about greece i am here to give a different perspective to what i think when it comes to the use of greece for our natural hair and i am someone that has used greece in the past as a child and also in my you know early teens i used greece i then stopped using greece i think when i first started looking after my natural hair and unfortunately it was highly influenced by people that you know were sort of dismissing other ways of looking after natural hair it's almost like there was only one way and it's the clean way and you know greece is bad for you etc and i was one of those people who got on that bandwagon and yeah did not use and do not use um grease and discourage people from using grease etc but i'm here to say look you live you grow you learn and it might actually not be as bad as we think <laughs> so if you're interested in this video i encourage you to keep watching um and of course if you use grease i'm really here to hear from you guys because i have not used grease since going I've always been natural, but since starting to take care of my uh, since, since starting to take care of my natural hair, I don't know if that makes sense. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on videos that I post twice a week. And if you are a returning subscriber, you know I love you. You are welcome. Let's get into this video. <laughs> So the motivation to try Greece is two things. I have been watching a lady called Natural Academia who uses heat on her hair and her hair is beautiful. Another motivation is that I did a poll on Instagram and I believe on YouTube right here to ask how many people used Greece. And to my surprise, like 50% of us use Greece. And I was like, what? You know, it's possible that I'm not including everybody in my audience, you know, in all my topics that exclude heat, um, exclude grease, etc. So I decided to come up here and talk about it, open the uh, conversation about it um, to people that might be interested and yeah, to hear from you guys how this regimen is going. Once again, can we all be respectful in the comment section, whether or not you use heat, that's not really the point. The point is to be respectful of yourself and others that might have a different hair routine from yours. So I don't think I need to tell you what grease is. Grease is pretty much uh, petroleum. So the actual petrol that we put in our cars is obviously taken to the lab and made safe for use on the hair and the skin actually and it's made into this greasy formulation that is used for our hair and skin to manage it and you know seal in moisture etc so if you're like me you've used grease as a child we loved grease i used all forms of grease i actually still own some kinds of grease i've got blue magic and um Another one that I got recently, but I'll tell you about that towards the end of the video. <laughs> um, but yeah, we loved grease. We used Indian hemp, which had grease in it. We used uh, like Blue Magic, uh, Sulfur 8, and there's all sorts of other, you know, companies that are making hair grease, etc., for our hair. And we loved it for our scalp, for our hair, it worked. But then something happened and all of a sudden, he, um, Greece was bad for us. There were claims around the safety of Greece. A lot of people were saying that it is linked to cause health issues, for example, cancer. Um, obviously, it's a byproduct, so it's like it's a cheap product. It's not the most high quality thing you could find on the market. Uh, and there were questions about, you know, is it really good or safe for the hair? Um, and the biggest one is probably that it clogs our pores and stops hair growth. Some people just thought, look, I'm going to be, I'm going to stop being African and just say that I hate greasy hair. As though you've known anything different. <laughs> we love greasy hair. Like it's a different kind of grease from sebum grease, for example, 
but our hair actually loves that you know it thrives in those conditions because like grease is a, an excellent sealant for example it's probably the best sealant you've got on the market it really locks in moisture so it has its pros in that regard but yeah those are some of the reasons why people sort of ditch to grease and you know embrace the shade so why do people use grease i think it's obvious it's cheap um it aids in the manageability of the hair. Some people claim that it helps them grow their hair. Obviously, it's a lubricant, so it helps in just, you know, allowing the hair to glide against each other and of course shine. So those are some of the best things that grease can give you if you use it or if you are thinking to use it. Now, before I move forward, we need to be clear about something. Grease, oil, butters, those things, are not moisturizers those things do not hydrate the hair those things seal the hair some of them nourish the hair some of them aid in the moisturization process as in help you lock in moisture but in and of themselves they're not moisture so if you ever use something like grease you must use it in conjunction with a living con a living conditioner because if you put grease on your hair nothing comes in nothing comes out i don't want to say nothing comes in or out completely but it drastically changes um, the amount of product or hydration that your hair can get in and out of that barrier that is grease when you apply it to the hair it's not like yes it's greasy it wears the hair down etc but it's very similar to say for instance castor oil which i use and you might not be able to see or feel that, oh my gosh, everything is locked in or hindered. But on a molecular level, grease actually, the molecules of grease are quite large and they do close the cuticle um, and seal in that moisture. So yeah, it's important to be mindful if you're gonna use grease to ensure that you use a leave-in conditioner or some kind of hydration before you apply the, um, the grease. Whether or not grease clogs the pores, that's the huge question, isn't it? Because a lot of people have, uh, you know, have said, you know, grease clogs the pores, you know, it will stunt your growth, etc. And I have found conflicting information on the internet. Um, I watched a video by Naturally High. I will link it above where she talks about grease and the research into grease. And the fact that it can, it has potential or it could actually clog your pores and therefore affect how your hair grows out of your hair. Now, another video that I watched by, I think it's Curly, Curly Chemistry and she speaks from a very you know informed place. She actually says, and she uses grease herself, she says that it's impossible for grease to clog your pores because it's too large to enter your pores, hey? So what are we gonna believe now? Here's my conclusion. The articles that claim to, that claim that grease clog your pores also say that product buildup, oils, uh, even your own sebum, if left to build up, can do exactly that build up on your scalp so clogging the pores i think is probably what where we're stuck at it's not exactly that it clogs your pores but it creates a barrier on the hair that you know is likely to just make it unconducive for the hair to grow for example if you leave your hair unwashed for long, long, long periods of time without doing anything about the sebum that's sitting on your scalp, it starts to form this really waxy, thick layer that causes all sorts of scalp problems. And it can make it hard for the hair to try and push out of the scalp. Um, yeah, and, and just, you know, create a, 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 an environment that's not very conducive on the scalp. So I think any product has potential to build up 
um, and any product has potential to create a barrier, if there's enough product building up, etc., that can hinder uh, the maximum, like the, the, the most optimum, for example, uh, condition of the scalp for our hair. So here's my conclusion um, in analyzing this and just looking at oh, you know both sides of the spectrum. While grease works for some people on their hair and their scalp, it might not necessarily work for everybody. Someone today might say grease has changed my life, my scalp, my hair is lovely, my hair is thriving. Someone will say, look, it doesn't work because my hair is dry once I, you know, wash the grease out and start to get that moisture in. I'm having to wash my hair more often, for example, because grease, if you have grease on your hair or your scalp, you need to really focus on cleansing. Um, because while you can remoisturize, it's not as easy to get things in and out of your hair. So it boils down to what you like. Do you like the feel of grease? Do you like what grease does for your hair? Um, do you just like grease, period? Um, and if that's the case, feel free to use it. Um, having been informed and you know all this information about grease and what it does for your hair, my thing is if you're going to use grease, you would need to really cleanse your hair um, so that you take that grease out. And you can't just cleanse your hair with like apple cider vinegar or a sulfate free shampoo. You must cleanse it with either a sulfate shampoo or other shampoos that have specific cleansing agents in them that have the ability to actually take out grease. I'll put some names below here of some of those ingredients that are not found in a sulfate shampoo. Maybe they might, I don't know, but they're usually found in sulfate free shampoos, but they still do cleanse grease. Do you know what I mean? So the notion that only sulfates can cleanse grease is actually not accurate because there's other ingredients or other, um, uh, you know, things or surfactants that we can use to remove grease that are not necessarily sulfates. Now, if you're sitting here saying, oh, look, I like grease, but I'm not sure I like, you know, what it does or, you know, I don't want to, you know, have a, a very strong barrier against on my hair. I want to re-moisturize my hair midweek, etc. I have a few options for you and I've got three options. So if you like grease, but you don't want to use actual grease, um, then you can use T444Z, which I've used before. I use it on my scalp and on my hair. I've run out and I'm waiting for the supplier to have more stock for me to restock. Um, but it feels like grease. It feels like grease. It looks like grease as well. And when you put it on your hair, it's exactly like grease. So, you know, you can use it on your scalp and your hair as well. It's a herbal um, product. It is not the cheapest, um, but you know, if you're looking for something that's greasy, but not grease, then you can use that. Another thing you can use is castor oil. I use castor oil. It gives me the same greasy effect that I like, and it really locks in my moisture. And obviously it's natural. So that's my preference. Another thing that I discovered a few years ago was it's like a solid castor oil of some sort. So it's like battery. It's like buttery castor oil so it feels like grease when you put it on your hair and in your hand so it's another option um obviously if you don't want those and you just want to go ahead and use grease then by all means do that i am a little bit uneasy about how grease can or how grease is linked to cancer for example um, I'm, I'm not very well researched on it and I'm still researching on it. So because I'm not really fully informed, I feel like, look, I'm just going to pause and not incorporate it in my regimen. I haven't for years. However, it's funny because I use grease on my lips, Vaseline, especially when I go to bed, like I slap some Vaseline on my lips. So I'm like, you know, like you're a hypocrite, like you should really not be using that on your lips if you'd, you're afraid of the effect. So, you know, it's safe to use. It has been 
put on the market it's been you know uh, deemed safe to use on the hair and on the skin so i don't think we should be afraid of it like ah uh, but you know be informed and make your own decision about what you want to do So the little research that I've done indicates that petrolatum can either come refined or unrefined. And if we're talking about unrefined petrolatum, it can have some harmful elements in it. However, the one that's used in cosmetics is highly refined and safe to use. So it's recommended that you sort of ensure that you buy your petrolatum from reputable companies. One of the websites also says that refined um, petroleum has got no known health concerns whatsoever. Um, and another one actually says that there are no studies that show that petroleum is linked to causing cancer. Paula's Choice uh, makes commentary that petroleum is actually derived from a natural resource and highly purified before it's used in cosmetics so there's no risk um, to any exposure to harmful chemicals cosmeticinfo.org goes ahead to say that a lot of consumer products such as bottles ink in pens automobiles tires telephones and even fabrics are all prepared from petroleum and once again uh, stresses the fact that it's highly purified before it can be used in cosmetics in the end i think it all boils down to what you want as an individual and what you feel about the product to help you decide whether or not to use it what i am keen to do however is to challenge myself to use it for a set period of time so not to adopt it as a something permanent in my regimen, but as a trial to see how my hair feels, how it works, if it's incorporated in my regimen and how my hair reacts to it after years and years of shining away from it. And of course, Natural Academia is a motivation. She uses this TGIN to moisturize her hair and she uses do this do, what is it? Growth therapy, olive oil. I actually have it because I had wanted to do this, a few, I think it was beginning of the year, but I just got sidetracked. So she uses this one. That's that one. Smells good as well. So, you know, let me know. Let me know if you're interested in seeing me incorporate grease in my regimen for maybe a space of three months, two, three months. I can do it for the rest of the year or something like that and see how my hair behaves maybe i'll do a poll and ask you guys so keep an eye out on the community tab of my youtube channel i'll put a poll and see how many people are interested to see this and of course if you use grease you know comment below let us know how it's worked for you how it you know improves your hair how it helps your hair etc and if you don't use grease let us know how you know you're using the other products and why you don't use grease etc I hope you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe click that notification bell so you get notified each time i post a new video until next time bye